Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Thursday, June the 2nd. The year's 2022. Let's talk trading, taking profit with Walmart. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and from Walmart's. Walmart, we've been getting a lot of uh, chatter out there um, about you can't make any money taking one or two pips and... You know, if you take a five pip loss, then you've got to, you know, make three or four or five winning trades, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I think there's even people out there wanting to write EAs about our trading methods to show why they don't work. <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's probably true. But, you know, uh, what I'll go and say to that really is that, you know, the reality is that everybody's got their own method their own way of doing it you know there are people who are very successful out there who you know look for that you know that standard two to one you know uh, uh, re reward to risk ratio you know they, they they want they want that because you know and the nice thing about that is that if you are able to get two to one all the time yeah guess what you know that's the type of thing where you only got to win maybe you know, from 40% of the time, 30% of the time, whatever that number comes out to, you know, so that's really nice, you know, whereas you can go the other side of that and say, you know what, I can go, if I got a method and I know I win 40, 50, uh, let me correct that. You, you got a method that, that you have that, that you know that you win 70, 80% of the time, you can go the other direction. You know, and that you can be a profitable trader that way. It just depends on your, it depends upon your entire trading plan. And you need to go and be able to go and build your trading plan around whatever way that you're going to do it. And you need to go and spend the time and actually go and look at what you're doing. Okay, if I know that I'm winning, you know, X percent of the time, I need to go and build a trading plan around that to make it work. And I think that's the part that a lot of traders don't um, don't take into account. They write the entire trading plan, which is great, and you should. But now go back and let's look at what you've done. Let's go and be honest with ourselves and say, "Hey, I'm winning here. I'm losing there. Um, what do I? What you know? What can I do to correct this? You know, and and move forward from there." Yeah, and I think the other thing that, especially these EA boys, girls, non-binaries, um, they run the EA and they run it like all day long. And, it, you know, we have specific hours where we trade. And right. they, they never seem to understand that part. That's just a, a big thing they leave out. I mean, you trade, I think you start, you're trading about an hour or two before I start mine, only because I don't feel like getting up at four o'clock in the morning anymore. Right. Because <laughs> you're on, you, well, see, you're on East Coast time, I'm on West Coast time, so there's a three hour difference there. So, yeah. you know, I pretty much start my trading uh, when New York starts at eight o'clock New York time, when the big boys get there, and, and you've got, and, you, and so... We're both trading that London, New York um, area where you've got the most activity. Yeah, and, and you're exactly right. I trade that particular area of time. I start trading at 6.45 Eastern, U.S. Eastern time, you know, and usually by this time of day, which is now, it's now 8.45. I'm usually done by this point in time. I'll continue trading at this point, but, you know, it's... Um, but I'm basically done at this point in time, you know, um, and, and you're exactly right though, because that's when these methods are going to work. Why? Because there's enough people involved in a trading where what will happen is you get movement and not only you get movement because there's money behind it, but you get movement. That's not crazy movement. The problem, you know, I'd love to be able to go and trade the Asian session, to be honest with you, that would suit my lifestyle a whole lot better, you know, and I've tried it, but the problem with the Asian session is that you don't have nearly as many traders out there. And so what happens is it's very, very slow moving. And then all of a sudden, some big guy in some big bank somewhere in Asia goes and dumps something. And the next thing you know, 
it, it gets all messed up, you know, and it, it just uh, wipes out my entire my entire profit for the day potentially or more, you know. And that's why I don't trade the Asian system. Like I said, I love to trade it, but it just it doesn't work for the way I trade. Now, on the other hand, there are other people out there who do have different methods to trade differently than I do, and know that that's part of what happens at that that time you know in, in, during the day you get nothing 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 and then all of a sudden you get that huge move but their method is set up around going and capitalizing on that big move that happens once you know during the entire Asian session and they make their money and they walk away well I don't trade that way so therefore I'm not gonna work it's not gonna work for me so an EA based on how I trade is not going, it's going to fail miserably during that time, you know, uh, but vice versa on that is that an EA that goes and capitalizes on the guy who's came up with a way to go and capitalize on that big move that happens, you know, in during the Asian session, you know, if he tries to run that EA during, you know, the London, New York crossover, he'll probably get clobbered. So if you're going to build an EA, you need to go and build the EA specific for what you're trying to accomplish for when it actually works. You know, and that, that's that that's the important thing here. We need to go and realize that that's part of the equation. Right. And, you know, the other thing um, is a lot of these traders are, what did you call them? The $100 account traders or something where they're trading one um, micro lot, you know, a dime a pip. And yeah, you're not going to really make any money at a dime a pip. Um, if you're only taking one or two pips, I mean, you can't even buy a cup of coffee, but on the other hand, if you're trading, say $50 a, a pip, uh, you make two pips, you just put a hundred dollars in your pocket. Yeah, and there's a big difference between them. And that's not meant to go and dis dis uh, besmirch anybody who's at that. You know, unfortunately, um, that's their account size at this moment in time because we all start somewhere. I mean, my account was extremely small when I first started, you know. And but the thing is, even going and trading a dime a pip, if you go and dedicate that. I'm going to trade a dime a pip and all the money that I earn goes into that account and I don't ever take any money out of it so I can build that account up over time you'll no longer have that hundred dollar account maybe at that point in time you go and have a two hundred dollar account well now you've doubled the amount of money you can make you know or well, three hundred or five hundred or a thousand ten thousand or more, even more you know and that it just takes time to get there and that's that's the thing and I think a lot of a lot of folks I think they walk into this forex thing and you know they're frustrated on their job job i get that you know and or they just unfortunately because of economic times they go and lose their job you know and they got to come up with something and a lot of folks i've seen where you know unfortunately they didn't keep you know, <laughs> I hate to say this, but they didn't keep, you know, in touch with their, their own field. And so they got niched and now they've gotten niched out of their job. And now they don't have any other choice but to go and find something else to go and do. And they look at Forex as a money making machine or, you know, basically a slot machine that he'll it's tilt every time. Well, guess what? It doesn't. And it takes time to learn and it takes money to learn. And you know, and if you got if you got the other pressure that, you know, I need to go and do this and immediately be able to take money out to put into my pocket to pay for living expenses, I'm gonna advise people not to do it. You know, because the thing is, you just putting too much pressure on yourself, you know, and you're going to wind up going and causing yourself more headache than it's worth. Now, on the other hand, if you're looking at it from the perspective of, okay, this is something that I can do long term, you know, and I'm going to go and take the years that it's going to take, and I'm being serious with that word, years, to go and learn how to go and do it and do it right and learn how to go and trade, learn how to go and discipline yourself to go and do it. But you can start with a $100 account and wind up walking away with a, a huge account where you're able to support yourself and your family and any other things that you want to do and live very, very well. But 
you know, understand. This is, you know, I've used this example on, on this channel before, and that is that I don't want to be sitting in an airline, on an airplane rather, you know, with the pilot who the only thing he's ever flown is, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator. You know, I just, it's, it's not exactly what I want to do. I don't feel comfortable with that. Well, would you feel comfortable risking your money that way? No. You start out small, you learn the business, you learn how to do it, and then you can go and just keep on inching it up as you get better. You keep on inching it up more and more and more. And, you know, and, but your original question really came down to, can you make money on one pip? Yeah, you can. You absolutely can. You know, I've taken, uh, I'll disclose for today, I, I've, dis I've taken nine trades today, and um, I'm up my net after paying commissions, okay, I'm up 19 pips, okay, 19.6. So rounding them is off to 10 trades, let's say call it 10 trades, and 20 pips, okay? So that's basically two pips a trade. You know, you can make a ton of money on that. You know, yes, it took me 10, tra 10 trades to go and do it, but I did take 10, I took the 10 trades in the two hours, basically two and a half hours of trading. You know, that's, that's just the way I trade. Now, other people say that's foolish to take that. You should only be taking one or two or three trades. I, you know, I saw one guy um, on one of the message posts, you shouldn't be taking more than three trades a day. You know what? There, there are going to be people out there going to say, say to that guy, you know what? You're trading too much too because you shouldn't be taking more than one trade a week. You know, it's got nothing to do with that. It's got everything to do with how you set up your basis and your trading plan and how you feel comfortable. It's all about you, you know? Yeah. And I think I mentioned uh, on a video uh, about how, you know, these traders that want to say, you know, why or prove somebody else wrong as a pro as opposed to just saying, you know what, here's how I do it. And if somebody else does it differently, that's okay. But you know, this is how I do it. Um, and if there's something you can learn and take away from what I do, great. If not, that's okay too. But there's just no real reason <laughs> uh, to get in these, uh, you know, uh, battles over uh, yeah. trading well, methods. I, I, it's, it's, it's like you want a battle, then put a trade on. <laughs> you know, make some yeah. money. <laughs> That's where the battle is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's funny because, like, you know, obviously I trade very similar to you, okay, because I use a lot of your, you know, indicators, and, I, and I've taken a lot of your advice. But the reality is you and I very rarely take the same trades because I, I've taken what you've taught me and I've personalized it to make it work for me and fit within my trading plan. And that's what we all have to do. You know, what it, 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 we have to, that's, I think that's the thing that's, you know, that a lot of traders don't get, you know, and, and that is simply this, that, you know, your personality and your psychology have got more to do with this trading game than people um, give homage to. And so, the thing is what where you would get really stressed out about getting into a particular type of trade or taking money off the table too quickly, excuse me, too quickly or any of those types of things may not bother me. And there are things that, you, you know, uh, you know, Tiro, I've been trading with you now on the phone now for over two years at this point, you know, and there are times you take trades. And I was like, what is it? What is this dude doing? Well, why did he do that? Why would he do that? And it turns out, you know, working out very well. Well, that's why you took the trade because it followed the way that you like to trade. It was not the way I like to trade. And therefore, it's not a good trade for me to take. But it was a great trade for you to take. You know, and that's that's how we have to look at things. Take, you know, but I don't care who you, whose channels you listen to, listen to it, not from the perspective of finding a method that you do A, B, and C, and then there, when you do A, B, and C, there's a pot of gold at the end of the day. No, that's, that's the wrong way of looking at things. What you need to do is look at steps A, B, and C, and what can you glean from it, and then take it and improve your your way of trading exactly and you know what traders the fastest 15 minutes in trading has gone by so i hope you enjoyed today's video maybe uh there's something you can use 
in your trading because it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the rumpled one, over and out.